panda's in the truck and we're heading home. I love you, Panda. I'll see you later. I love you. I love you. done with our chores and I thought I would start my series of finding our ranch and the really cool story that goes along with it. 40 plus years ago, and yes, it was that long. I had ridden horses when I was a little girl, but I wanna tell that story also. But I've been riding since I was two years old and my mom put me on with her horse even before that. So I've always loved my ponies. We had my mom's horse till I was about six years old. And then we moved into the city and she sold her horse. We went to the farm where my mom had her horse and I did ride a little horse named Muskrat. Sweetest little barrel horse. He was fast. And then we moved again towards the mountains, we went west. I was going on 12, I believe it was my 12th birthday. And I was in middle school. Back then we called it junior high. And I had a friend who said, hey, I hear you like horses. I ride at a really cool stable. Would you like to go? I said, yes, let's go. So we grabbed our bikes and we headed up to Hillcroft Acres. And that was the beginning of my love for the stable. And ever since then, I've wanted one just like it. Hillcroft was 40 acres. It had begun by Louise McConnell in 1961, I believe, maybe 62. I got there, I was a bit older, but it was still very cool. And I loved that place. And I practically lived there for close to 12 years. Ever since then, I've wanted a Hillcroft of my own. I warned my husband that I wanted one. I've talked about wanting one to all my friends. That was my dream. That was my goal. No matter what it took, how long it took, how old I was, whatever I had to do. I was going to find my Hillcroft, whatever that would be. I dream big. 
real big. Kind of the whole go big or go home. I will begin this series and show you a few of the places that we looked at, what I liked about them, what I didn't like about them. A lot of people had told me they would love to see how I found my place and how I went about it. So that's what I plan on doing. First of all, we made sure that we kept rising above. My husband kept moving jobs and making sure that we rose above each job to acquire as much profit and gain as we possibly could. And that can take a very long time. We started building our credit with gas cards. We got rid of bad credit and we waited. We had to be very patient. I also would ask. I'm not a religious person, but I am a spiritual person. And I ask. I asked every day. And of course, sometimes I forget to ask. And then I would say, oh, I have to ask. I have to make sure that I bring in as much positivity and good karma and all the things so I could find my place. And all the lessons that came along with it. I wrote my first book. I do plan on writing my second. As I went to find this place, I made sure all my little dreams and goals were also realized along the way. First of all, we had to stop renting. We needed to get into a house. Back in 2016, I believe, maybe 2017. We could look for a house. We had got out of a rental. He was going to raise our rent. And then we found out that they're raising rent everywhere. So we decided to stay in that place, but he wanted to sell it. Good. It made us move out. And we got another little rental for two more years. And we had to fix some more credit stuff so that we could buy another house. And that's what we did. It took us two years to raise our credit and buy a house. And we stayed in our house in our van for four years. And I moved my horses to Arvada after the farm in Firestone, where I was helping my friend Taylor with the farm, he decided to move to Arkansas. And so I moved my horses to Arvada, eight minutes from my house. And we kept working on getting our own place. Then, of course, the virus came, and that was another two years where we had to wait. 
But we kept working on our credit and we kept working on being able to go at least look and see what we could do. Well, one day I just thought, let me look and see what's out there. So I got on Redfin and started looking for horse properties. And I saw one that I kind of liked in Morrison. So I talked to my dad, who's a realtor, and I said, hey, dad, I got a question for you. Do you think we could go look at this place and see what we could do and start looking for our own horse property? And he said, let's go. Okay, here we go. So this was two years ago. We looked for, our, we drove to Morrison and the place was almost $2 million. It was only four acres. It had very small paddocks with pins, it had a little barn, it had a little uh, outdoor arena. But for the price it was, it was cute to look at. The house wasn't what we wanted. It was right by Bendemir Speedway, which is actually closing down, but at the time, Bendemir is quite easy. And also the place was right by a major highway which was really noisy. And right above the stable would be this highway. And it was only four acres. I wanted more. I wanted to be more out of the city, but it was a good place to look at because it let us know the beginning of our adventure to getting here where we are right now. After we looked at that stable, my dad looked into if we wanted to look into something like that. Looking at that place let us know what we needed to do. We had to wait for some stuff to drop off our credit. And we had to work on that a little bit. So we had to wait a year after looking at that place. Every place that we looked at taught us lessons. And I, I love looking at properties. So we looked at a lot of them. This is the end of our first episode. Every couple days, I'm gonna put up another episode and make this a series because it's a really cool story, but I don't wanna tell it and have it take a couple hours in one episode. We're having a lot of fun here. Right, Panda, canter. Oh it's a really cool story. And I hope you'll join me in following as tell all about our adventures here at Mr. Green Catch. I'm here to let you know that you can follow your dreams. Dreams are never too big. They're never too broad. If they if if they are what you want, then you go get them. And walk. Whatever you gotta do. And Good girl. You never give up. Oh my goodness, that was perfect. Yeah. No walk. <laughs> There's no excuses. Oh my goodness, that's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> There's no can'ts or tries or hopes or any of that. You have to do it 
and you have to make it happen. And what, it's only you, only you can do it. No one else can tell you. And if you have people in your life that are telling you that you can't follow your dreams and you can't acquire them, only have people in your life that bring you up. Don't let them bring you down. And I'm going to tell you all about it. So I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and share and do all the things. See you real soon.